All right. Um, well, back to kind of business. Um, we, I think two or three weeks ago, uh, we talked about the fact that uh, the new, um, now what's it called, what's it called, I'll get it right, um, the new Labor Re- Relations Act, new laws being considered by the current government to essentially nationalise wage negotiations and a return in some ways to national awards um, may be illegal under international labour laws. And I know when they were first put on a long list, of countries that were going to be looked at by the ILO, International Labour Organisation in Geneva, a whole lot of people were saying this was rubbish. But no, 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 it seems now they've made the shortlist. Probably not something New Zealand wants to be uh, keen on, but the people who put us on the shortlist, list, the people who are screaming blue murder about this, uh, are Business New Zealand, and their chief executive, Kirk Hope, uh, joins us on the line. Now, Kirk, welcome to the programme. Thanks, Sean. All right, so we've gone from being on the long list and now we're on the short list. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and just let me clarify, actually. So we didn't necessarily put um, the New Zealand government on the, on the long list or the short list, actually. Who did? I mean, the, the, thought, the thought that we would influence, for example, US, uh, US unions to get the New Zealand government on this list is, is frankly farcical. So and who did get us on the list? Who complained to the ILO? Basically, we made the complaint. And oh, then so it was, was you guys? Decided by, yeah, we, so we made the complaint. Yeah. However, um, it was decided by a group of, uh, you know, group of business businesses, um, unions and governments. And they said, actually, this is, this is really critical for us because it cuts across a whole lot of issues that we're really, really interested in. Um, including things like freedom of association. So unions are incredibly um, wed to this idea of freedom of association because it enables them to organise um, internationally. And and what we say is the New Zealand government are compelling people to to organise when it should be voluntary. And in and, and, and most other places around the world, it is voluntary. And this is why not only unions, business organisations and governments are worried about it, so all three of those are worried about it. Okay, all right, so... We're on a list of now, what, how many possible transgressors? 40 or so? No, no, 22. Oh, 22. Okay, so it's the rare air now. Um, who are some of the others and what are they possibly getting pinged for? Well, there's a, there's a few other governments. Um, there'll be, you know, people who have, trans, um, who have, have used child labour. There'll be, there'll be governments who have... Um, have breached a whole bunch of different types of conventions, are very similar to what New Zealand has not has has announced that it's going to do. It's 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 also really important. Like New Zealand is a founding member of the ILO. It, it's had a hundred and in, in, in its hundred years existence, um, New Zealand has kind of been one of the the more liberal um, governments uh, that has that has been around the place. And for them to announce that they're going to breach a, a, a fundamental convention is is, is Pretty serious yeah. stuff. Okay, so when is the case heard or determined? What's the next step? So the next step is uh, actually I'm um, here in Geneva at the moment uh, and it's happening tomorrow uh, Geneva time, which will be um, which will be uh, overnight uh, in New, New Zealand. Zealand. So yeah. that's what, yeah, that's when the, that's when the New Zealand case is going to be heard and, uh, and, 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 and it'll be contested. So um, so what what will come out of this? Uh, is essentially. If, if New Zealand, the New Zealand government will have a range of different issues um, if, if they're found to have breached um, what we're, you know, what the complaint is about, which is Convention 98, yeah. which is one of the ILO conventions. And it'll be that they'll probably then breach the Bill of Rights Act uh, in New Zealand. Um, so that'll be a pretty tough thing to argue if, if, you, if you're putting, you know, fair pay agreements in front of the public and saying, yep, they're all cool except they breached the Bill of Rights Act. uh, Is the government bound to um, be bound by decisions from the ILO? Uh, Well, it would be a pretty bad look if they weren't. As I said, they're a a founding member of the ILO, um, so a 100-year association. And I think New Zealand has only been in this position perhaps once before in the entirety of its membership of the ILO. Yeah. All right. So the decision tomorrow is the lead. At what stage is the Workplace Relations Act? 
Uh, so it's it's before select committee at the moment. So the you know again, I would encourage many of your listeners and and viewers to to say, hey, we don't want fair pay agreements. They are essentially if people don't like didn't like. Um, for example, um, mandating of vaccines. This is mandating of your employment agreement. Yeah. So if you didn't like if you didn't like that, you certainly won't like this. You will have virtually no control uh, over what happens in your employment arrangements if fair pay agreements go through. This is the thing that we've been trying to wake people up to. The, if if an international organisation like the ILO cares enough about it to interrogate it, New Zealanders should. All right. Um, my other question then: Would the legislation be pulled if there was a finding against it by the ILO tomorrow? Well, uh, well, I think there'd be a lot of pressure from the government to to rethink how it would how it would um, uh, put fair pay agreements together. What one thing that we've said that they could do, which would remove almost all of the tension, would be to say, look, if people want to agree to these things, and there will be good reasons why industries might want to agree to a fair pay agreement. But they shouldn't be compelled to do that. Um, So if they remove the compulsion, there's a benefit there for the industry because they want to do it. Uh, I think I think you you'd probably get a pretty pretty good outcome, frankly. Mm. I know you're working hard on this um, issue in 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 Geneva, Kirk. But what is the mood in Europe as the war in Ukraine rages on, as uh, fuel prices go up, as food shortages loom? What's the feeling you get? In Europe, and from, and I imagine you're rubbing shoulders with people from other parts of the world. Yeah, look, it's a, actually a really good and concerning, a good, good question and a concerning answer. Um, you know, you talk to your counterparts from um, from business organisations all over the world, and I think we're in a, you know, it's trite to say that we're in incredibly uncertain times, but we are. You know, we have the tension between the US. Uh, in China, you have the war in Ukraine uh, with Russia. Uh, you have uh, the consequences of of Brexit and the destabilisation of you know a pretty significant economy in the UK. Uh, and, and so there is a lot of what I'd say is um, again it's really trite. There's a lot of uncertainty, probably more than we've seen for a long period of time, both from a geopolitical perspective, but also from an economic perspective. Um, and a lot of the things that we've relied on to deliver higher standards of living for people are being challenged, and we've, we've kind of seen that with, you know, with what's happened with inflation. What are uh, what are government's responses going to be to try and drive inflation down and get it back under control so that you know more people have more dollars in their pocket? Um, and and that that is a pretty concerning uh, for, for me. Uh, I would say that's one of the most concerning things when you talk to your counterparts from around the world. All right, Kirk, I will let you go. Thank you for joining us on the platform uh, this morning, and I'm sure we'll hear more on this story in the next 24 hours. That is Kirk Hope, the uh, head of Business New Zealand.